Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a channel update, Delta update, life update, project update kind of video. I want to just start the video off by saying um, thanks so much to all my Patreons and my YouTube members. Um, I am still unemployed. Uh, you're really definitely helping me. Um, I'm not in like any, you know, dire rush or anything like that, but it is definitely taking me a while to find a job. And uh, I just want to thank all of you for your support. Um, as a reminder, I do have Fusion tutorials on Patreon and also on YouTube members area. So if you're looking into building a or designing your own 3D printer using Fusion 360, I do have a tutorial series. We are up to seven episodes. And um, it's a really great series to learn on how to get started, essentially. So thanks again, everyone, for, for the support on that. So let's do the fun stuff first. Let's talk about the deltas. So if you've seen my previous video, you'll know that I designed this little tiny delta called Min. Um, this design is complete. Uh, for the most part, there's not really much that I would change on this. It's a nice little tiny compact toy printer, I guess you could call it. Very happy with it. About the only thing I would probably change is um, the arms. I'll talk about the arms a little bit later, but basically these 3D printed arms were great for kind of figuring out an arm length while I was waiting on parts and stuff like that. But I would definitely recommend changing these ball joints out with higher quality ones and then also making your own arms with carbon tubes. And I'll show you what I'm going to be doing for Delta Flyer um, at the, near the end of the video. So otherwise though, I'm, I'm happy with this printer. It's a cool little printer. It's not meant to print very fast. It's just a nice compact little printer put on your desk, print fidget toys and stuff like that. Um, Again, I would love to see people design little models to print on this guy, which is around 70 millimeters by like 90 millimeters tall on this little min uh, printer. So there will be more videos on this guy printing and, and things like that. I am going to upgrade the arms on this to carbon fiber tube arms with different joints and things like that, just to make it as good as I can possibly get. So stay tuned for some videos on that. And I really wanted to tell everyone um, and update you all on the progress of Delta Flyer. So I have been diligently working on this printer in between a bunch of other things. Um, this is what Delta Flyer's frame is looking like. Uh, it's, it's progressing quite well. It is taking a little bit longer because I am designing this to be enclosed if people want. I think for a printer of this size, being able to print ABS on it, having the option to print ABS on it, just makes a lot of sense. It's a more versatile printer. So I am designing that with in mind, which takes more time. I'm very excited to see how this thing is gonna look when it's all enclosed. I think it's gonna be a pretty stellar printer. Um, but as you can see here, basically the frame is split up into smaller parts. I have made the frame a little bit larger than what it would normally need to be for a 120 millimeter build area. So that's why I went with this multi-piece frame design. I definitely know that there are going to be people on the Discord making one-piece designs and there's already an crazy amount of mods and remixes of this printer and all sorts of really cool stuff. If you're not on my Discord, not only is there awesome Delta channels separate from mine, but there's a separate channel for each of these printers as well. It's a really great pl place for Delta 3D printers. We have a lot of people on there that know way more about Deltas than me, like James Prey and others that have their own YouTube channels. And it's just a great community for Deltas. So if you're just into Deltas, Definitely check out my Discord for that. But um, the benefit of a multi-part frame is, for instance, these uh, bed mounts here. I can now change these bed mount designs with just changing these three little parts rather than reprinting this bottom frame over and over again. So that's pretty nice. 
Not much of this printer is going to change though. The effector from Min is coming straight across to this. Uh, I don't really see any changes to make on that. I am going to of course use better quality ball joints and uh, carbon tubes for the arms. I am still using IGES bearings for my carriages, but the carriages are absolutely identical to Min. And uh, most everything is, is the same. I do have to design like a top inner top plate. Again, this is enclosed. I don't want hot air escaping out of the printer. And then um, I have been ordering a bunch of little parts off of AliExpress to test them for all of you essentially. So essentially this printer was gonna be designed with a 120 millimeter build area. And if you're gonna print this printer out of PLA, you could print a bed. You can definitely print a 120 millimeter bed, build it as cheap as possible, like I've done on Min, and that's completely fine if you're gonna be printing PLA. I have found some inexpensive beds on AliExpress though. This is a 120 millimeter by three millimeter thick bed on AliExpress. I think this is $11 shipped or $20 shipped Canadian. It's very cheap. Um, for scale, you can see how uh, technically how small this is on this printer. You can see there is quite a bit more room. I think the build area for Delta Flyer might come around to 140. We'll see here depending on the length of the arms I go with. But you can see what a 120 millimeter bed fits like. The disadvantage of this is I've not really been able to find some good heaters. Uh, on AliExpress for this size, this 120 size. So I found a 150 millimeter bed, which I think is a, a better size. This is a four millimeter thick one. Again, this was like 20 bucks or something like that. Very, very inexpensive. And I do have a 120 millimeter heater, a 24 volt, 120 millimeter heater that will go onto this. And again, it's like $15. So this is gonna be a great bed for ABS. So you can see here how much nicer this um, is proportional to the frame. And like I say, I might get a 140 millimeter uh, printable area on this. I don't quite know about height yet, but I have increased the frame height by 50 millimeters from min. So we'll see what that works out to, but that's kind of a look at the 150 millimeter bed that uh, is on Delta Flyer here. So I am going a little bit higher quality components on this printer. I do have LDO motors on the bottom here and I am using pouch pulleys and belts and idlers, all the same brand um, all together. I have also done a quality of life for people. Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but I will explain it for you. I have put some text at the top here to tell people what, what tower this is. So this is your basically your A tower, your B tower, and your C tower. And I've also put on here X, Y, and Z for your motors, so you know what motor plugs into your board. So when you print these out, you'll know that this is your Y motor, and you would plug this into your Y main board. This is your Z motor. You'll plug this into the Z on your main board. Simplify that for people building. This also will help you find the front of the Delta. It's very difficult. It can be very difficult to figure out what the front of it is because it is basically a, a symmetrical triangle. So this will also help define the front, which way the effector should face, that type of thing, and just help people build this and, and simplify it and that type of thing. I also would like to put up on screen here the first seven serial numbers for MIN. So people have just been going crazy with MIN Delta and there's already seven serials issued on my Discord. I will uh, kind of just go through the pictures uh, quickly here so you guys can all see the builds. Really, really awesome builds that people are doing. And like I say, there are a lot of mods on um, the Discord. Uh, there's a lot of people kind of remixing the whole printer as well. I know one of the more popular ones would be Squirrel Brain. If anyone knows him from his build, his Tic Tac uh, 3D printer build, um, you'd seen him. He's on Golden Jaguar streams and that type of thing. He made a very, very polished, really cool looking version of Min, and I think he has a 120 millimeter version. Um, 
d definitely check out my Discord. There's so many cool uh, remixes of Min and um, just cool ideas on carriages and all that kind of stuff. So I really do encourage people to check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my camera to show you how I'm gonna be doing my arms, my delta arms going forward. And we'll talk about a little bit on how I'm gonna go about it. I know there's definitely some different ways to do it. And again, check my Discord for some ideas if you're wondering on how to build your own arms. So let's go check out my arms and I'll show you how I'm gonna assemble them. All right, here we are over on my desk, quote unquote, workbench. So the ball joints that I'm going to be using are called, um, the brand is MP Jets, or they're called MP Jets. Um, if you go onto my Min Bill of Materials, you will see these as an optional part. This is probably going to become the standard part. Um, you cannot get these on AliExpress. You do have to order them directly from the manufacturer, but they are uh, much better ball joints than the metal ones that I've spec'd out. There is no play in them. I believe these are nylon, so they are self-lubricating, and these are not going to wear out really uh, at all, and they have a nice preload to them. They really are very high quality, and I think you can get a set of 12 for like um, $20 shipped. They're not expensive, and I definitely recommend them over these metal um, metal ones that I have been using uh, if you can't get these, I mean, you can use these worst case scenario, but I would highly recommend that people do spec out these MP jet joints. So what I'm doing is um, the, the best way at least I found or what I'm comfortable with is I ordered some M3 threaded rod off of Amazon, some like 100 millimeter lengths. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be threading them into these um, MP jets. And then I'm going to be cutting them off, uh, you know, like maybe these would stick out 15, 20 millimeters or something like that. And then I'm going to epoxy them into my carbon tubes. So I have ordered some carbon tubes off of Amazon. These are really, really inexpensive. You'd be able to find these on um, AliExpress as well. These are six millimeter outer diameter and a three millimeter inner diameter. And basically what I'm doing is I have one kind of set up here. I've not cut this one yet, obviously, but I've threaded the M3 rod all the way into my um, ball joint here. And then, like I say, I'm gonna cut it, you know, somewhere around here or whatever. And then I'm gonna just slide this in. It's a nice fit inside this tube and I'm going to epoxy this in here. I will be making a jig essentially that I can set all my arms up I did order some of these uh, pins. So these are gonna basically align my, my arms. So there'll they'll be, you know, a couple rows here of pins. I'd like to do all six arms at once. These will slide onto the pin and a pin on this end with the other ball joint once this is cut. And then I'm gonna epoxy these and then let the, let the epoxy cure. I think this is probably the best method uh, for me, at least. Um, I'm sure there are different methods. I'm using an M3 um, or dowel, really. This is probably the best fit into this joint, so you don't get much play rather than a uh, M3 bolt. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible on these arms. I'm also going to try and cut these arms all in one pass so that they are all exactly the same length. So I have um, six of these tubes that I'm going to put into my um, hacksaw, kind of do them all, make sure they're all straight on one end, and then I'm going to cut them all in one pass. That way they're all the same size. I'm going to have a wet paper towel over top of this so there's no carbon dust getting in, uh, and I'm going to do that outside, of course. You definitely want to make sure that you're doing this correctly and as safe as possible. You don't want carbon dust in your lungs. So that is what I'm doing for my arms. That's the method that I've kind of come up with. These are very, very stiff arms. They have no play in them once they're on these MP jets. And I think there's gonna be a big difference in uh, quality of prints versus using those printed arms. So that's what I'm doing for arms. And I, I just wanted to show all of you how things are progressing. 
I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks I can get Delta Flyer printing and I can get some files out for all of you. Uh, but, you know, life happens and uh, I am still working on some other projects like RC150 and I am working on my Pegasus printer. Um, if anyone is unfamiliar, you know, thanks for coming near to the end of the video. A uh, quick teaser for you here. This is my Pegasus printer. It's a flying gantry printer that I'm designing myself. I know it looks like a Voron V2 or V2.4. It is not. Everything on it is my own design except for the exception I'm using Archetype tool head there. I think I am gonna make my own tool head though, but this is just, it, the frame on this is small. This is a beta frame, so I'm not posting videos about this, but this is a really awesome printer and it's printing very well. So there will be videos on this um, soon. So thanks everyone for supporting me and um, subscribing and commenting. I, I really do appreciate all of you. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks, guys.